Hello world, my name is Michael and welcome to another Teapot Tech Talk where today we're going to be talking about VET, the next generation of front-end tooling. Or at least that's what they want us to believe. VET comes from the same guys who made Vue.js, so we're going to take a look at it and determine is it the holy hand grenade of front-end development or not. So, VET came about from a need for speed on the front-end development. They didn't want us to be waiting for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, or two minutes, three minutes for something to happen, for your dev environment to start. I got, I go into all of that in the blog post I wrote, which is about VIT, so check that out. The link is in the description. And if you're very interested in VIT, I also urge you to check out their site, vitjs.dev. It's a very interesting site, and VIT is a very interesting project. So. What are our goals for today? Our goal is to set up a dev environment or a dev workflow that mimics what I usually use on a daily basis. So it has all the good stuff, linting, tests, storybook, that. And then to do this, we're gonna set up a ver environment to build a calculator. Now the calculator is not the focus of this uh, talk, so don't worry, don't even worry, pay attention to the code of the calculator if you're interested. The calculator will be on my GitHub, but that's not the focus. The focus is setting up the dev environment, and we want to see if we can do this in under 10 minutes. Maybe not, but we're gonna try. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. So how do you create a VIT application? Well, same way you create any other application on the front end these days. There's a template for that. And for that, you just have to say yarn create, and I think it's VIT, there we go. Is going to ask you for the name of your application and the application name which we're going to use is you know very creatively called calculator if i can spell it now vid gives you options on what to create you know you can create a vanilla javascript app application you can create a view application you can create react but what i want to talk about most is you know what i want to highlight is lit because I'm going to be making a video on that later because that's actually quite interesting to me and others. Here, you can literally specify how specific you want to go. Do you want a React application with SWC running on Dino instead of Node.js? You can do that. That's actually pretty cool. But for today, we're not going to do that. We're going to talk about React, not Vue, and we're not going to have JavaScript and SWC or TypeScript. We're just going to have a vanilla ja JavaScript application. Here we go. We've created our application and let's see what it gave us. So if we switch over to this side, you'll notice this is my IDE and all we have is a default application. We know we've got our index, our app, we've got assets, all of that. Hmm. What about if we run it? What does it look like? It's, it's, it's a simple application. Let's just run it for, for completionist sake. Right, we're in here. No dependencies. Great. So low dependencies, then we say yarn dev. And there, that's a ridiculously fast uh, boot time for the dev server if you've come from Webpack. That's actually ridiculously fast. I've had dev environments in Webpack which take a couple of minutes to load. So let's check this out here. So there we have it. We have our application running. It's not the best application, but it is a proof of concept with Vit and React. We've got a little button here that works. Click, click, click. You can click it as many times as you want. So what's the first thing we're going to do? Well, first we're going to put it, save everything we've done now to version control. So let's create another item here. We're going to CD to, what is it? Uh, code vid calculator there we go and then we're just going to initialize get in it what am i thinking all right and then let's see what do we have everything let's just add everything to github and there we go let's just say initial commit okay and then boom now, first, second thing we're going to do is, I like linting. Linting is awesome. So we're going to use a linter for this project. What kind of linter do we think? Well, gold standard, ESLint. All we have to do is just run npm init, 
ESLint config. It will handle everything else. Let's run it. So it asks you question like the config. This is not a tutorial on config, but it's a good thing to know. It will ask you question and install your dependencies. So look, let's look at the options. Do we want to check syntax, find problems, and enforce code styles? Yes, yes, and yes. Are we using React, Vue, React? And do we use TypeScript? No, we do not use TypeScript for today. We will be using TypeScript later, but not today. And we're targeting the browser. Do we want to use a code style? Yes, of course we do. Which one? Standard. The gold standard in code styles. And it starts installing everything. There we have it. So it has finished the installing the linter. But if we try to run lint, it won't work. Why is that? Because we don't have a lint command. So let's go to our package JSON right here. And you see it is already installed all of this stuff, but we need to manually install one more thing, which is the lint command. So what this says is we want to lint every file with a JS, JSX, and CJS extension. So let's check it out in practice right now. So yarn lint. There we go. Lots of lint. Let's see if you want to fix it. Yarn lint fix. I personally prefer not having the fix as part of the command, which is why I took out what Copilot was suggesting. But to each his own. You might want to always have the fix enabled. I don't want that because there are times when I just want to see what the issue is without having to change anything. Our linter is working perfectly. If you notice, we have a warning, React version not specified. This is a very simple thing to, to fix. You just come up to your React, you go up to your, just after your rules or whatever, we want to put settings. Thank you, Copilot. We want to put React, thank you, Copilot, and version. And we want to say detect. Thank you, Copilot. Save that. So if we run it again, boom, absolutely no more warnings. Great. So we've got our linter up and running, and we've linted everything. This looks like another good point to commit everything. We're going to say add linter. There we go. So what's next on our agenda? Well, before we go a lot deeper into it, it, makes, it, it might be a good idea to add a single component so that we can test out everything else we want to do. So what are we going to do? We're going to add a component. Let's add the component directory, components. There we go. And we're going to add, since we're building a calculator, every calculator has keys. So we're going to add a key component. All right. There we go. Add it. And now, what does our key component do? Hmm. Well, it, it represents the a key, a single key, you know, like 0, 1, 2, 3, plus, plus or minus, etc., etc. And... We're going to need a few things for our key to work. We're going to need um, yarn add. We're going to need React point, class names, and SAS. SAS. Let's add those first. That done. Now we're going to paste. I told you there was going to be a lot of pasting. I ain't typing all of this stuff out because that's not the point of this entire video. So there we have it. We have, this is a simple component, right? Um, all it does is use point target, which is this weird, nice React library. Check it out. To create a key, an individual key. And if you notice here, it check, uh, it references a key module dot C S C S S a SAS file. So we're gonna have to create that. Let's create that file, key. Mm -hmm. mm. Which is another beautiful thing I would like to point out about Vit. Vit supports CSS modules out of the box. All I had to do was just add SAS. 
So I could literally have just had a module.css and it would have worked fine. So that's another beautiful thing. Don't worry, we're not gonna be talking about the style, we're just gonna copy and paste. Copy and paste. There we go. So, we now have our key. Now, at this point, at this juncture, it's, it's, it's a, we want to see what our key looks like, right? Now, normally you probably have to add the key to like app.jsx and you know refresh here but we don't want to do that because that's a lot of work and imagine if you had like a million components uh, well not million components 10,000 components you don't want to keep adding them to the page just so you can see what they're doing uh, how they work how they interact so there's this tool which we agencies use on a regular basis which simplifies that it allows you to to um, isolate a component if that's a word, yeah, isolate a component and then just view it by itself. That tool is called Storybook. So let's install Storybook here. You see, so installing Storybook is almost as, as simple as, a store, as installing ESLint. So here we go. It's NPX this time. Init, Storybook, init. Go. And there we go. So what it did is it actually installed a lot of things and then it's gonna ask you a very important question. Do you want to install the storybook uh, Linta plugin? This is why we started with linting because everything else builds on top of that. So here we go. Do we want to install the ESLint plugin for storybook? Yeah, why? Yes, we do. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We now have Storybook installed. As it says, we can run yarn, Storybook, and then see what it does. And there you have it. We now have Storybook installed, but unfortunately we are out of time. So we're going to have to continue this in part two. Subscribe to get notified of that. Hit the like button because that's really helpful. And until next time, happy coding.